Welcome to MPA's virtual fitness class. Through its wellness program, MPA provides one hour and 30 minute fitness workouts. We encourage you to join in any of the scheduled classes. All classes are recorded, so if you missed the live class, check out the MPA website. Select the wellness program page for the links of previous class videos. Have fun working out. Here's Milan. All right, so we're gonna call this Thanksgiving stretch because you're gonna to need to get stretched out after you had that tryptophan and that turkey. <laughs> I love that word, tryptophan. Isn't that an awesome word? All right, that's what you get that makes you sleepy when you, uh, after you have turkey. But understand how much you have to have in order for you to truly get sleepy. You can't, you have to eat like a whole turkey. All right, it's just that you are uh, eating so much that the, the tryptophan is not an issue, just that you can eat yourself into a, a food coma, which once a year is absolutely okay. All right, so with that being said, let's get started. Today is our Thanksgiving stretch. So we're going to get started on our bag. And it's gonna be a two-parter today. Um, we're going to use the bag and then we're gonna come over and we're gonna use the stool. So if you are like me today, you have been sitting Let's get that back warmed up so we can get, we're gonna jump over today. We're gonna to do something that we, that we don't normally do. We normally finish up with the hips. So we're going to um, get those hips open. We're gonna do something a little adverse today by doing that. So the first thing we do, of course, we always gotta get that, that, uh, that back and see if that scary stretch is anywhere to be found. And we're, we haven't did anything today. So that scary stretch might be found today a little bit. Let's come on over. And we're so far now that I don't really put my knees down. I kind of keep my knees above, just above the ground so that that pressure can come off and all of the pressures on that lower back, see if there's any scary stretch there. And there's just nothing there. There's just nothing hanging out, not at this height, maybe on the stool. Let's go over here. Oh, we haven't decompressed at all today. So whatever we're gonna get is gonna be real without any setup. So I'm just trying to test the body today. Nine and 10. And we're gonna go and just see if we can. Oh, oh there's, the, there's the, the collarbone. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can't get the collarbone over here real quick too. Oh. All right, no collarbone over there. All right, move a little bit more forward, drop that head. Uh, we got a little tension in that neck though, don't we? Oh, look at that. Oh, there you go, release baby. Mm -hmm. A little cat and cow through the back. Yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I know that's a difficult one for a lot of us. Mm, elbow release. Now I'm gonna go here, so my shoulders are turned in, now I'm gonna drop my head in between my shoulders. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, baby. Drop this elbow. Oh yeah. There was the back, and that was on that um, right side. Yeah, I'll take that all day. Oh. I mean, I was on the left, I'm sorry. Oh. Still nothing on the right, of course. Oh, wow, that actually warmed my core up. Nice, we got some releases, so that lets us know how far we're coming along that we can actually get a release without having to do a whole major warm up. <clears throat> now I'm gonna tell you, I've come in the house with a really tight back and thought I could go straight to my foam roller. 
that doesn't always work out because that's more decompressive. You're not stretching. You're just looking for that result through pressure. And that doesn't always happen. It's very discouraging sometimes when you are really tight, you've been driving forever or something and you're tight and you want that release and you come in and get on that foam roller and it doesn't give you what you want. Guaranteed, let me see, what's today? Um, yeah, because I'm gonna go grocery shop. I'm gonna go get me a foam roller tonight at Big Five by, uh, by my house. They got a brand new Big Five, at a, a mega store, a Big Five mega. Oh, if you guys haven't been to it. And it's, I've been already in there. It's not a mega store. It's bigger, but it ain't. It ain't like a Dick's uh, sporting good. That's a mega store. That's a mega sporting good store. Big Five didn't do that. <clears throat> Maybe the ones out in Modesto and stuff are other mega stores, but not the one they just built in Pittsburgh. It's bigger, but it's not a mega store. All right. Now let's get to those hips. Normally we finish this off. We're going to start with it today. Oh, yeah, baby. A little to and fro. Oh, that is so tight. We're just testing the waters to see if we can go from sitting in a pretty warm chair, not a cold day, to a decompressive, ooh, oh. That's it right there. Bow that back, round it, bury that chin into the chest. If you need to, hold on to the back of the knee and round, round, round as much as you can. Mm. And then forward, arch, arch, arch. Bring that pelvis past center, past 90. And then arch that back, straighten that chest. Oh, you heard that? That was the uh, elbow, the inside of the elbow. Ooh. And then bury that chin into the chest round. And then come down here. And if you can, bring both elbows in. Oh, yeah. And back up. As you come past middle, round the back, bury the chin into the chest, round, come back, back, back. Ooh, that was the hip. Thank you, Bobby. That was the hip. That was the hip. That just got a lot, a significantly lot easier. Now, the only thing about when you release the hip that way, it makes it a little bit tighter this way. So now we got to get that I, I, nine forward release. And that comes from the back. We're not gonna probably get that release until we get on. Whoa. Oh, I got the hip release now. I know it's no need for me to do it anymore. <laughs> All right, let's go back for that back now. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Oh, I can feel it right now on that right side, that right leg. That right hip wants to give it to me, that right? Oh, yeah, there it is. Uh-huh. Ah, yeah, yeah, yes. That's a little bit of precursor before we actually get into it that is letting me know that, hey, we're going to get released today, brother. Oh. I was reading somewhere that decompressing yourself while cold um, there's science behind that for the simple fact is that the muscle is cold and after you release it, now you have this whole almost uh, anti-swelling thing going on. <sighs> going on by having the cold muscle and because it's skeletal, it doesn't affect you as much. Ooh. Bring that up slow, let all that pressure be right there on that lower back by bringing that leg up, that's that engagement. But there's so much pressure, the um, pressure outweighs the engagement by far. So much more engagement than, uh, I mean, so much more pressure than engagement. Which means that I'm, it, the, it's more weight of my leg putting pressure on my lower back than me using the muscle to engage it to lift. So engagement versus pressure, and the pressure is higher than engagement. So it's worth it for me to actually use this to come up and down because my leg is heavier than the muscles that are engaging to lift. You follow me? Uh, mm. Bring the feet apart. I'm gonna squeeze in that lower back right now and really get that, that setup going. 
So here, you're gonna put your feet together. Mm. And you're gonna feel that all through those hips coming up that psoas. Uh, one. Turn them in two. Turn them in three. Oh my goodness. Four. Seems like nothing. You try it. Five. Six. Oh. Seven. Eight. Nine. I'm gonna come all the way in for ten. Mm. Mm. That is a major release right there. Oh, all right. So now I'm pushing my hips up. Right, the hips are getting their thing going. Now what I want to do is. Ah. Come on over. This is all the hips. Spring straight down for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And push it out. Bring it over. You see how my leg just kind of almost did a jarring move? What was is that I'm sitting on the front of the hip girdle. I mean, at the ball joint. And when I bring that leg straight out, it stretches that. And then it has to sit back in order for it to come into that position. It has to sit back in the um, back side of the, of the, uh, ball joint. And you'll see it again on this side. Let me bring this in a little bit closer for some more support. There we go. All right. I'm going to show you again when I finish at the end, you'll see it kind of make that jarring movement because that's the, the uh, hip going back. Right. right now, it's in front of the ball joint. That's why the stretch is so significant. Mm. All right now in front of the ball joint. That's why you feel it so much here because the ball joint is lined up with that gluteus maximus right there, coming up from the gluteus maximus all the way up to the top of the hip girdle, which is the gluteus minimus. All right, and then into the gluteus rhombus that comes up the, the, uh, the back running along the rib cage. And another 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, now watch, it's in front of the ball joint. I'm gonna push it down. You're gonna see the difference. You see that? My hip literally went from the front to the back. Ooh. Oh, man, it's good. All right, bring it in. I gotta be careful, I hurt myself with this hat yesterday. Oh. And all that pressure come down inside on that lower back to the point where it goes away. And it should take no more than about 10 to 15 seconds. And another 10, nine, yep, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, take your heels, push your heels straight up. And then that gravity plays part. If your knees start to bend, no big deal, let them bend. And 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Once you get to your range of motion, like my legs will keep coming down. I'm not doing anything. This is just gravity. I am not assisting in any way. They've reached their range of motion. I think that's about it. They haven't, they, well, they kept going a little bit. Not helping at all. Oh, that pressure is mounting. I'm just gonna let it do its thing. Natural range of motion, fully supported. And I think I'm there now. I'm going to count my 20, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. Notice both hands are on the back. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ooh, we bend at the knee because we're not strong enough. We, we're, we're decompressed right now. If we were to let the legs go straight back down, we would hyperextend our back. So we're gonna protect ourselves. Bend at the knee, bring the pelvis forward. 
Rest the legs there. And oh, yeah. Oh, big, big releases when I put my feet down. Oh, that's what you're looking for. Oh, that's what I was looking for. Big releases. Yes. It's our Thanksgiving Friday. Oh, yeah. Oh, big releases on that lower back right there. That's what I'm talking about. All right, roll it out. Mm -hmm. Guys, I set you up for extreme success on that one. So I, that was just our test. That was a Thanksgiving stretch test because I wanted to know, hey, can I decompress my hips and release my hips without being extremely warmed up? Because understanding that it is not uh, a whole bunch of muscle muscle inside of the hip itself. It's tendon and ligament, which don't necessarily need to be warmed up and it's skeletal. So I looked it up and there is no, and I went even doctor and therapeutic way. There is nothing saying that releasing the hip that you need to be warmed up. Some people say yes, because it comes into the back, but if you keep it isolated to the hip, then we're pretty safe. And we just walked it, lived it and breathed it. So now we know that we can literally come in and release the hip. So that was in that full out release. That was pretty awesome to do. All right, ah. live it, walk it, breathe it guys. Now let's go into Cobra and see if we have any residual ooh ahs left. All right, so let's get those hamstrings stretched out first. We always build ourselves up for success. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put those feet together inside of the shoulder, right? And then we're gonna push those heels straight down and let all of that stretch come from the back of those heels up through the calf, up back behind the knee, all the way up through the hamstrings, over the glutes, and all the way up into the back. That's why you see me stand in a pike position or a jackknife as I come down. And that pressure is just saying, hello, hello, hello. And I'm swaying left to right to take any of that residual that's hanging out in the, wherever, in those hips. I don't want any surprises when I go down into my cobra. Coming down deeper. Oh, feel it right in the front of that. Ooh, we feel it right in the front of that right calf right there. And that's where I want to hold as I push down on both of them, pushing those heels into the ground for 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. Good. Lifting that head. Deep breath in. Exhale and drop that pelvis, lift the chin. Uh, almost nothing there. I wasn't even expecting a release at that point because I got everything when I put my, my heels down. This is the same thing, just standing. It's the same way you would release that pressure. Yep, I expected nothing. Because uh, that release on those, dropping those legs was so significant. The big ones released the left and the right. So can't complain at all right now. That was so superfluous. I mean, now that I know that, you guys know that we're going to always start with the hips now. Because look at this, we're going into Cobra fully extended and we're not even warm. I mean, I'm far from cold, but I'm just saying like, normally we, we save that to protect ourselves and see what research does. It gives us the knowledge of, so that was, I mean, just think guys, now you know that you don't have to go through anything to, to release your hips after you've been sitting in your chair all day. I would still go say, go through the, um, the calf and the uh, hamstring stretch, you know, get that set up for success. And then I would go straight into it if I were you. I mean, I just literally did it. I did nothing. I didn't even go outside and do any work in the yard. I normally do nothing and play with the dogs, nothing. Just on the computer. So I, I lived it, walked it, breathed it. I went to see if it was true. And I'm talking about, oh, now let's go back to the stretch. See how we're doing there. All right, so let's go <clears throat> cat and cow sitting upright. So let's start off with... <clears throat> All the way down. 
keep that back arched. Those hips, the inside of the hip girdle was still tight. We didn't get to the inside of the hip girdle. We released the back. So that's something else that we need to address with this, with this stretch right here because I was about to call it complete. Now that I'm feeling the inside of the hip girdle is still really tight. I know all the thing we had we could have did was put our feet and did our V shape and we would have been fine. Oh, that's good stuff. There's nothing there, not even that little cartilage floating around above that that hip muscle. I don't know if it's like me. I've heard it from a lot of people that they get that. And oh, I'll go here too with it. Here, this is where you would feel it would be about right there. And just nothing. A uh, tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Let me see. Nope, nothing. Ha ha ha. That goes to show. So what's happening when you stop feeling that, you know, if you had a click, like you move your shoulder or your hip and you always had this click, and now you start to notice that it's, it's lessening. What's happening with that is that you're putting muscle over that scar tissue or you're putting muscle over that joint that either is missing cartilage, okay? Or that is um, either scar tissue or possibly out of alignment. Ooh, that hip is tight. Those inside hips are tight. So let's get to that really quick. Yeah, those insides are tight right there, buddy. We can't have that. That's what causes the ab issues. All right, so how, we, how do you address that? We're gonna do that same exercise that we just did, but this time we do it with the feet flat and the heels touching. So as we come down and that hip push those, um, that hip, that pelvis goes forward, look what happens to the hip, the abductor and the hip flexor. They're forced to stretch, not linearly or even laterally. They're being stretched by going up, uh, not, not forward or backwards up. I don't even know what you would call that. Vertically, yo, vertically. Yeah, vertically, I'm just tripping. So not linear or lateral, but vertically. But at the same time that they're being lifted vertically, they're also being stretched linear and laterally. So you're getting the best of both worlds. Plus you're pushing that pelvis up, giving it that release off of that, uh, off of the spine, okay? All right, so let's do all those fun things right now together. First thing we're going to do is we're going to come back to, to include it because now, even getting right here, there's pressure on that spot. Thank God we already decompressed it. If I was doing this right now without the decompression, it would probably be around an a eight. It's probably a three right now. Do you see how that works? That is amazing. Now that brings it to about a seven or eight. Ooh, that's significant. <laughs> Oh, that's the second one. Yeah, baby. Oh, oh my goodness, man. We have, what are we, four for four right now? We're like four for four right now. We're like four for four. What I mean by that is for every class that we've done something for decompression to get that hip loose, we're literally getting it every time. What does that mean? means two things that the stretching is is working to the next level and we're putting the muscle on where we need to so we're doing exactly everything right are we doing it at a little bit faster than a snail's pace yes we are because it's 100 percent safe but is it paying off every single time are we yielding result every time yes we are all right would you have consistent would you rather have consistent small victories or one great victory every once in a while I would go for the small, small, consistent victories. Oh, let, yes. All right. And boom. This is going to get real. Oh, that's different. That's different than the first way, baby. And I feel like I'm too far back on the bag. So before I go all the way down, I got a chance to come up right now. I think I'm going to go higher on the bag. I'm going to go higher up. Right? And I'm gonna give myself a little more support on the bag. Higher up 
and a little more back on the bag as opposed to just hip. We'll get a little more back in there, which coming down makes it a lot more difficult. Ooh. Yeah, that's a lot more of a stretch, but it's a lot more support too, so I'll take it. And then Bob Barker, baby, come on down. Oh, that's gonna get them there. Ooh, 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 ooh. No cheat skis. And right here for just 30 seconds with that back completely supported for 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, that pressure is different. Oh, and we got to take it off. So we got to go back to this one because we got to stretch that back out. All right. We should get in. Oh, my goodness. Two more big significanters and 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, ooh, 4, 3, 2, 1. Mm. Bring that in a little bit, get that extra stretch, and then take them out. Oh. Wash, rinse, repeat. Mm. I don't know how many more I can get because that back just keeps giving me more and more releases as I put that pressure over that uh, right hip. Ah, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, he did that like a champ. Oh. Oh. Not expecting anything else. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, just have to open up those hips, take that pressure off. Ah. All right, 